Well, talking about and, and continuing, I guess, the theme of co-governance, of course, the Public Service Commission, the bureaucratic mandarins, came out with a report this week into the activities of or government departments' relationships with companies uh, owned or associated with members of Minister Nanaya Mahuta's family. It must be noted that this inquiry had limited scope to probe things like the behaviour of cabinet or cabinet ministers, but it did find the behaviour of officials wanting in managing perceived conflict of interest. And it's such a stupid word, perceived conflicts of interest. If there's a perceived conflict of interest, there is a conflict of interest. That is, by its very nature, what a conflict of interest is, because perception is reality when it comes to conflicts of interest. This report comes out, it is damning of the way some of the contracts were handled, but limited in its scope. Yet even then, no real response from the government and no real response from Nanaya Mahuta. Well, the National MP has been pushing this along, writing letters, asking questions. Is Simeon Brown, the MP for Pakaranga, and Simeon joins us on the line now. Simeon, thank you for being on the platform again. Well, good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You might have thought, I might have thought you'd look at that result of this inquiry and said, oh, success, uh, I've landed a blow. Well, look, I think the um, the report was effectively um, written, I think, uh, a while ago, and I think it basically states um, many of the facts that we already knew um, prior to the report actually being written. Um, but what it does show, the culture of carelessness um, by the public service in terms of how they dealt with these concerns, in particular, the Ministry for the Environment and how they appointed um, three of Nanaima Huda's family members to a five-person panel. They had a number of ways they could have dealt with that. They failed to do that on every single occasion. Um, and the uh, Kainga Aura, where they literally failed to even ask if there was a conflict of interest when there, actually, when there, when there certainly was one. So it shows a culture of carelessness from my perspective. But as you have rightly pointed out in the intro, um, there was a couple of things that this report was not looking to was any uh, influence the minister or involvement the minister may or may not have had. Uh, and secondly, uh, it didn't deal with the Hipuapur appointment uh, that Nanai Mahuta made, um, which I think is a very clear case that um, Cabinet Manual was breached in that regard. All right. Are there ongoing investigations into those matters, or is as far as the bureaucracy concerned, this draws a line under it? Well, as far as the bureaucracy is concerned, this draws a line under uh, the issues. So uh, have done the review... Uh, of the issues which relate to the bureaucracy, to the public service. They found a number of failings, uh, which I think are the right conclusions. Um, they've, they've committed to um, putting in place some better processes, oh, such yeah. as asking for whether there are conflicts of interest. It should be standard practice, making sure that's standard practice. A lot of the recommendations are actually, there's already policies around these things. It's basically just actually making sure it's done. And so the, re, the, the key thing I say is, well, if they weren't doing it in this case, where there was a minister involved at perceived conflict of interest, and how many other cases are we not seeing this being picked up as well? And so that's where I think it becomes a quite a concerning issue, as I say, a culture of carelessness. But there's nothing outstanding you've got by way of questions or inquiries? Look, not at this stage. I mean, there's still a number of Official Information Act requests um, that I have in, which I'm waiting on to come back. Um, but in terms of the issues relating to or contract, the Public Service Commission has done its report, has looked into that and has concluded, made its conclusions. That must be disappointing. And I'm going to say, I know some of our listeners will have the feeling that, and I'll put it bluntly, she got away with it. Well, I think the, the reality here is we, we have held uh, the government to account on this issue. Uh, they have had to answer for what has happened. Um, and the reality is that uh, the scope of this investigation is limited. And in relation to those two points, um, you know, firstly, obviously, the, the scope was, was was limited. It wasn't able to look at ministers or ministers' actions or not or non-actions, uh, and and it doesn't involve the Hipuapua appointment because that is to do with annual. And the only person who can actually um, hold ministers to account as to whether they have followed the cabinet manual or not uh, is the prime minister herself. And we have seen that over the whole issue of entrenchment in the last little while. 
We believe it's very clear that Nanaima Huda has again breached the Cabinet manual in, uh, in, in, the, in her actions around entrenchment. But of course, it is the Prime Minister who holds the, the Minister to account as to whether or not they have breached the Cabinet manual. And her view is they haven't, mm. or she hasn't, and so nothing happens in that regard. As you know, we've been calling for Mahuda to resign or, be, uh, or to be sacked more, uh, for by the Prime Minister due to her actions for the, the entrenchment scandal. That is absolutely appalling what she has done there um, and setting incredibly bad precedents. And uh, it's really beholden on the Prime Minister to actually take action. Yeah, it is, but she's not going to. Look, I just want to, because the two issues are related, I don't know if you heard the interview with Jim Bolger, but I'm sure you've read the column uh, that Audrey Young wrote, excellent piece in the Herald, uh, talking to him and Doug Graham. And this idea that we do not know and the Prime Minister or the government needs to explain exactly what the end game is and what co-governance means. Yes. What is your impression of what the end game is and what co-government governance means? Well, look, I mean, I'm, I'm as unclear as to as everyone else as to where the, the government may wish to go with this. I mean, I guess my, my if you read the Hapua Pua report, which I have read, um, you have to look at that and go, that's where it's going to go. And there's things in there around, you know, making sure that every government department has joint um, Maori and, 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 and non-Maori uh representation and governance, you've got to have separate prisons, you've got to well, in many ways they want to shut down the prisons there's a whole range of things they want to do there's talk from the Maori party about having a separate parliament so you, if you if you listen to the people who are pushing the agenda um, you've got to think that well actually what they want here is effectively um, two separate democracies within New Zealand or two separate governments within New Zealand and so that's, that's effectively uh, where uh, a lot of the rhetoric takes you but again, from the government's perspective, I think the point is, is, is very good. I mean, where, where are they wanting to take New Zealand? And from our perspective in the National Party, we, we believe in equal citizenship. We believe in uh, the sovereignty of the state. Uh, and we believe that uh, there should be no co-governance of all public services. And we've made those points very clear. And um, the government has the responsibility to actually stand up and actually answer those questions. What do they want for New Zealand? Yeah. How come your leader isn't more outspoken on these things? Well, I think he has been. He's been very clear around the issues around... He's been very uh, clear public. that he's learning to Rayo. Well, he's been also very clear that he has been uh, saying that we do not support co-governance of any public services. We'll unwind the Maori Health Authority. We're going to reverse three waters. So we've been very clear on in our positions, uh, and that's very important uh, and we, that we do that. And I've also been very clear in my, my role as public and about those positions. Look, there's w more work that we need to do, but the reality is it's up to the government to tell New Zealanders what the direction of travel they want to take for our government, for our public services, and, uh, and, 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 and to answer the questions which many New Zealanders are becoming increasingly concerned about. Uh, Simeon, does <coughs> the issuing of the, of the, uh, the report does that mean that this battle is over for you with Nanaya Mahuda or has she still got a, a target on her back as far as you're concerned next year? Well, look, well, National's calling for her to be sacked, to be honest. Her actions this year, particularly around Three Waters, have been appalling, have been anti-democratic uh, and something which uh, we will continue to hold her to account for on a range of different areas, um, including including in terms of public services and, and, and her actions. So, as I said, I've got a number of OIAs still outstanding. We'll be interested in seeing what comes through based upon those, um, and we'll continue to ask questions where appropriate, because actually our job as opposition is to hold the government to account um, and to make sure that they are acting in the interest of all New Zealanders. Mm. Simeon, uh, thank you for all your con contribution during uh, the year here on the platform. It's always been a pleasure talking to you. Um, no, and thank you, Sean. Thank you for your opportunity. It's been great yeah. talking with you too. Have you have a great Christmas. Uh, you too, Simon. We will talk again next year. Uh, Simeon, uh, we will talk again next year. Simeon uh, Brown there, the MP for Pakaranga, a guy made the uh, running, uh, finally the opposition got going, uh, made the running on Nanaima Huta, but nothing will happen. She goes to Christmas as, as a minister, wielding enormous power, it would seem, not in just in the Cabinet and over her portfolios, but in the Labour Party as a whole. So what do you think co-governance means? I think Jim Bolger raises a really fundamental question heading into an election year.